and it's a way to interact in a social way that we love to do in person in a world that we've just now assumed is web two. And it's, uh, it, it's something we don't get to hang out with our friends on. No. So even imagining is probably hard for someone like my mom or people that have been. It's hard two. to imagine, but once you see it for one to two seconds, it's hard to unsee it. Right. So it's not hard to imagine anymore once you go to a website, and instead of looking at information, you hear someone out of your left ear. Oh, so you look over there. Oh, there's somebody I can talk to. And then you move over there. You're not trapped in a box like Zoom, where you get Zoom fatigue and a kind of fight or flight reason to, 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 to get anxiety in your body and you're stuck. Imagine Zoom with agency. Imagine a website with people, places, and things, the same primitives that allow us to understand this world as being real. Some of us, still subscribe to the belief that this is the real world. I'm happy to be one of them. I'm trying to stay in it the best we can. But to be present in this world and to connect to other people, uh, we can now translate some of those elements into the virtual space and more fully integrate our digital and physical lives. Right. And that doesn't necessarily have to include a VR component to it. No. Which a lot of people don't understand that, right? That's a very important thing to understand. It would be nice to fast forward X years to get devices that are incredibly lightweight, that are not feeling like they're going to separate us from other people in the room, that we can wear for long periods of time, that have infinite battery life. Like That's a future that will come, but even when it comes, I don't think it's going to be as powerful as not having something on your head, <laughs> as having this, you know, God-given God form that can then uh, interact with digital information and connect to each other. So when you have a persistent virtual space where you can communicate in, the best way that we've come to the conclusion to, to bring it to the world is to create this analogy of the real world, persistent, always on. If you put something down there, when next time you come, it'll still be there. The, the cues that make you understand and believe that it's as real as anything else. Blockchain being another interesting aspect of the psychology, not only of ownership, but of independent permanence, right? So the idea that something will stay, even if a certain company or game, et cetera, dies, gives you that notion, that feeling that it's real. Mm -hmm. So now imagine a virtual space that exists independent of us. Now imagine that you want to go into it to connect to somebody. It doesn't matter if you choose to wear goggles. That's okay. Nothing against you for that. I mean, I think there, there's actually an immense benefit for some of that immersion for certain use cases. But what if you're in the car and you just want to tap in and talk to somebody? Well, you should be able to say, go in goes to somebody there. Now, maybe within this environment, my avatar shows up because we're in a different device and we see you that way. But if I'm in the car, I just want audio. And if I want to text, I can maybe just text. And if I want to come in on a laptop, I'll come in on a laptop. So device independence is the key to the evolution of virtual spaces to become as real as physical ones. And I think the big thing that I learned about the metaverse is we're already all of us are in metaverses. A WhatsApp group is a metaverse. A Zoom call is a metaverse. Uh, exactly. Whenever we're digitally connecting with each other, maybe a phone call was the original low tech version of it, like mm -hmm. you said. And so when people get that realization, you're like, okay, but it feels very simple in 2D. And you're like, well, what about if that was just better? Yeah. What if it was better from the perspective of enhancing our humanity? instead of pulling us apart, instead of disconnecting us? Right. What if we could take the next generation of technology and instead of keep rolling down the path where it's destroying the very essence of what we are, people who want to connect, and at least starts to ver turn back towards what will give us purpose, allow us to build better relationships, give us the tools necessary to live better lives. I think we have that opportunity now. To continue watching the rest of the episode for free, visit our website, londonreal.tv, or click the link in the description below.